Photographer Stephen Champion documented what was happening in Sri Lanka during that time. The memory of the JVP crackdown by the security forces is still very strong. A whole generation was wiped out in the name of preventing terrorism. Human rights groups put the number of disappeared at 40,000 people. And despite numerous government commissions of inquiry, no real justice has ever been delivered. And now the disappearances and abductions have recommenced in Sri Lanka. For us, the most bizarre thing is that all these abductions take place in government-controlled territory, in areas which have a lot of security or presence of security forces and the police. Uh, they take place in broad daylight. The white van phenomenon is back in our vocabulary. It had disappeared since the 1990s. And nobody knows. I mean, it seems, doesn't it seem totally bizarre? We're living in a country where anyone in broad daylight can come and take away another person, and nobody sees, nobody knows, nobody can do anything to stop it. The families of those who have been recently abducted are trying to attract attention. But if the past is anything to go by, there is little reason to be optimistic. I'm uh, not ashamed to admit that a lot, most significant proportion of what I've innovated, inspired, engineered, hasn't lived up to the expectations that I thought it would. So it's, I, I deal with failures of my own innovation more than the success. For me, that's hugely educational. Sanjana's latest projects enable citizen journalists to publish their stories on the internet and distribute radio programs for rebroadcast. It's, it's an information society of billions of bits of information. How many died, how many voted, how many didn't vote, how many... I mean, it's all bullshit. Finally, you need a wisdom society to get to the core problem. And once you understand the core problem, Loba Mohadeshwa Akusara Mula, which the Buddha described, it's simple, one statement describes the whole interactive picture. Uh, greed, hatred and delusion. And so the whole interactive story arises from greed, hatred and delusion. And they, on both sides, there's greed, hatred and delusion. Let's eliminate that. The problem is over. We don't need borders after that. In the north of the island, in the town of Kilonochi, the Tamil Tigers have established their de facto capital. Though it's still part of Sri Lanka, the process of travelling there is like entering another country, with checkpoints on both sides of the border. Kilonochi is a functioning town administered by the Tigers. There appears to be a sense of normality, but it's difficult to tell how much freedom people really have. Every year, the tigers remember their dead, and thousands come to mourn their lost friends and relatives.
Jagat Virasinghe is a visual artist. His recent work is critical of the monks who have formed a political party. These paintings about you know, snakes going to, to a microphone, it's all about these monks getting into politics. Because I'm a Sinhalese and a Buddhist, of which I'm very proud. And I feel like, you know, I'm being betrayed by the yellow robe becoming the color of a political party. The monks are quite militant and contradict the peaceful image of Buddhism. They consider Sri Lanka to be the homeland of the Sinhalese. These groups also oppose the international community's involvement in Sri Lanka's peace process. In a big country, it will take a lifetime to find out anything, whereas in this scale and size, to find all the evils of the whole planet uh, here in one place, and you find all the wonders of the whole planet also in one place. I traveled as much as I could, and I have to agree with Manik. All the wonders and all the evils can be found on this small island. Change is all that we have. The only reality on the planet Earth is changes. And the Buddha came, Christ came, the great prophet came, nothing have they altered. The world keeps going changing, 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 changing. The sun rises, the sun sets, the moon rises, the moon sets. It's a circle. It's a circle that goes round and round and round. And it's all a question of perspective. Either you see it as a sorry-go-round or you see it as a merry-go-round. So if you have been taught well, you see it as a merry-go-round. You have been taught badly, you see it as a sorry-go-round. Then you take guns and shoot the guy who's having a merry-go-round. The war has returned to Sri Lanka. The government initiated a major military offensive against the Tamil Tigers after claiming the rebel group provoked the fighting. You can't have defensive offensives. It's oxymoronic. It's moronic. Um, it's, it's a bizarre time we are living in. So I think the first step is to stop the hypocrisy. If you are serious about peace, then get with the business of making peace. You can't be shelling communities and at the same time saying that you're acting in the interests of national security, given that they are also citizens and they are also part of whatever national security you want to talk about. There's very little talking going on between the two sides and tens of thousands of people are leaving their homes, heading for bigger towns where refugee camps have been established. Their future is unknown. It's impossible to say when they will be able to return to their homes and experience real peace. Sri Lanka is a confusing place to live in. It's like a never-ending story of war and no war. It can also be violent and depressing, but at the same time there's something very special and very addictive about this small island. I think it'll take a long time before Sri Lanka becomes a peaceful place where everyone is treated equally. Everybody is the same. There are no great people and small people. Everybody has to eat, drink and go to the toilet by themselves. I can't pee for you and you can't pee for me. I can't eat for you and you can't eat for me. So in the overall sense, everybody is equal. And then the thrash around stops, trying to become somebody. It's a, it's a generational problem. I do not believe that we will have any space or any moderate voices for a while now. And how to teach young people that it's possible to be moderate, that in itself is an issue. Because if you don't see it around you, if you see politics and politicians as being the people who take extreme and violent positions, then that's the only way you know how to do politics. That's what you think politics is, right? We are all bloody. None of us can escape that. And I think the realization of that needs to be the one 
inspiration, I suppose, for the rest of the world, that if you don't address the root causes of conflict, all of us are victims, all of us have a responsibility to ensure that there is peace, and all of us need to work towards that. So it's not just the kind of realm of the government or the rebel forces, all of us need to work towards peace. Thank you.